appreciate you being here with us right here on the Meltdown channel. If you have not already, please subscribe for all the latest content in pop culture and entertainment news. One of the things that entertains us very, very much, that is the world of professional wrestling. And it is the biggest weekend in wrestling coming up with WrestleMania 40 set to take place this upcoming weekend on Saturday and Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. And we have brought in the wrestling expert that we call a friend. That is Brian Pavlik. Brian, thank you for being here. Appreciate you, man. That's him. Expert is too kind, but friend, I'll, I'll take. That's fine, but okay. thank you. Yeah, friend awesome. and expert is what thank I'm you, going man. with, thank and I'm you. sticking to it. <laughs> I also have John Lunsford here, the other half of the Meltdown. Mr. Lunsford, not as much of a intricate intro there for you, <laughs> no. but I do appreciate you being here. Uh, yes, I'm always here. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. Yes. We've got still a friend. Yes, yes still yes. a friend. Producer Tyler, also a friend that is here, and we're all different types of wrestling fans. I'm very much ingrained in the week-to-week -week product, but there are times where I'll miss a Raw, miss a SmackDown, have to catch up on YouTube. I try to keep one foot in those waters, but it can be tough with all of the things in which we're consuming here on the Meltdown. John, I would consider you more of a casual wrestling fan. You have an affinity for the more entertaining aspects of the business, but you're not week in and week out geeking out over this stuff. No, I, I was really into it, and, you know, Attitude Era peak was middle school for me, so that was perfect time for me to jump in and uh, become a fan of that. I, I liked WCW a little more when I first got into it and um, then fell out in high school. I, I'm too cool for that, and then kind of really fell off, and once it became WWE and what we know now as the product, I really didn't get into it until meeting you, and then you kind of got me into it again, and now I am more of the – WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, you know, those big four that I'll, uh, yeah, I'll watch them. I'll turn it on. I got Peacock, so I'll turn it on and watch it. But outside of that, you know, I have Raw and Dirt Poker on one, and that's about it. I definitely don't consider myself to be a wrestling know-it-all by any means, but I have been a fan for many, many years, multiple decades, and grew up with it on all the time and have always remained very intrigued by what they're doing with the main product. Tyler, I know you are someone who was a former fan, really invested in Undertaker, the Hardy Boys, Rey Mysterio. That was more your era. And now you're maybe leaning into, hey, what's actually going on currently with the product as something that could intrigue you with this WrestleMania 40 setup? Oh, yeah. I'm looking to get back into it. Um, it looks like fun, and I've just had such a long time away from WWE that I feel nostalgia for it again. And now's a great time to get back into it because, Brian, I would make the argument that all the pieces are aligned for a almost perfect setup to WrestleMania this year. And it, I really do think it's a very exciting time to be a wrestling fan. It's a very exciting time. Not for 20 years now, we haven't had this much interest in North American wrestling. Japanese wrestling, All we'll, we'll, that could be another show for other people on another day. But, you know, you've got... Some major promotions still swinging now. Um, almost reminiscent of the late 90s where you had WCW, WWE, ECW. Some of these other kind of territorials that were hanging out right at the end. Um, I have now seen in person WWE, WCW, ECW back in the day. I saw AEW about a month ago. I've also seen Micro Wrestling Federation. Wow. It's awesome. Okay, so as I said, did, did I, I do mention like that one? Yeah, it's great yeah. stuff. I started this off by calling you an expert, and you're like, "Oh, I don't know about that. I've well, only been I to mean, the micro wrestling hey, federation." Yeah. Hey, wow, best twenty bucks I ever spent. I guess so. <laughs> Two hours in a brewery parking lot. Oh, uh, I don't know how to properly transition from there, but we're going to do a fun little experiment. We're all different yeah. types of wrestling fans. We all have different levels of interest here, but one thing we're very interested in that is the Pavlik six pack. If you take a look. Over near the shoulder, Brian Pavlik, you're going to see six different lovely Coke products, and we are fans of them all. And they all are associated with a separate storyline going into WrestleMania 40, a separate interest point that Brian has. We don't know what those points are, but we can't wait to unveil them. John, I'm going to let you have first pick here. Ooh, okay. Tell me which drink you're choosing you first. Um, I mean, I got to go with the most colorful one to start off that red Powerade Zero right there. Red Powerade Zero. So I am a Powerade fan. The zero calorie is it's pretty good, um, but sometimes you just need those 
heavy electrolytes more so than others. All right, boys. Um, so this one, I, I notice it's fruit punch. Uh-huh. And so I'm thinking of something that has to do with, with a punch. And I don't know if you guys know this, but entertainment and WrestleMania go hand in hand. And there's always some type of celebrity involvement. And this year, we're not just getting involvement. We have a full-on fledged superstar in Logan Paul. The Maverick. I don't care for him outside of wrestling, but what this guy does and how easily he has picked up things is, if I was a full-time roster member and spent 20 years trying to break into an industry, I'd be pissed at him (laughs) for how easily he makes this look. And, of course, he has the punch. But where I'm going with what I'm looking forward to at WrestleMania, he has a great match against a longtime legend in Randy Orton mm-hmm. and a current, we'll say, future Hall of Famer in Kevin Owens. But what I think is going to happen, speaking of punch, did you guys know that he has a brother? Yes, mm-hmm. we are aware of this. Yep. And did you know his brother might be fighting a former ish retired boxing legend iron Iron mike tyson yes yeah Uh, arguably the best of all time yeah i i I think we're gonna see some type of celebrity involvement (laughs) where a certain brother of logan paul might second somebody to the ring to promote an upcoming fight against a boxer of some sort is it a coincidence that that fight is being streamed on netflix and netflix just signed a deal with (laughs) wwe this is where it gets real interesting because (laughs) we we have this tie-in this natural tie-in where brother and brother are hand in hand now i don't know if i'll go so far as to say mike tyson will make an appearance mike tyson wwe hall of famer by the way former member of degeneration x the ties are there but i have been thinking of another celebrity that i think will be shoehorned into WrestleMania in some form or fashion come Sunday night when Logan Paul wrestles. I can envision the Paul brothers running their mouth about something and saying we're the best. But I think there's going to be another fighter that makes his WWE debut. And I think that is somebody from Ireland, somebody from maybe an ultimate wow. fighting scenario, maybe. In a movie? Maybe, maybe it's just in a movie. Yeah. McGreg- <laughs> McGrory? McGregor. McGregor, yes. this yes. Conor McGregor. There's a way that they're going to shoehorn Conor McGregor in. They always find a celebrity. I think it would be a perfect tie-in for the Paul brothers, for Jake Paul to promote his fight. Again, I don't know if Tyson's going to be there or not, but I think there's an appearance between a Paul brother or a Conor McGregor at some point. And that's where I think the punch comes in. Excellent. Who needs prime when you got Powerade Zero? Give me that thing right that's there. Right. That's yeah, what I want. That's All right, there we go. That was a good one. The Maverick being our first choice there. And I noticed this did not come with a pair of brass knucks. And it seems like he, that's what he's been toting around Power a lot lately. Yeah, so he's, he's been, been relying to do it on it with Kane. Sure. That's why I picked the red one there. But, yeah, uh, yeah the Paul brothers are impressive. I, I'm impressed with everything that both of them have done mm-hmm. in their various uh, – uh, I thought you were going to go with maybe Floyd Mayweather being somebody who made an appearance because he already has done that, obviously, at WrestleMania, but that is who Logan Paul fought. That's right. In a fight uh, was Floyd Mayweather, so I could yeah. see something like that yeah, happening. Yeah. Something will happen who also with fought Logan Paul. Conor McGregor as well. Do you there think you Logan Paul's capable of being a good guy in WWE? No, and some people, you just, <laughs> you're just you just born better as a heel. He's one of those. I don't. He could go overseas. He could stay in America. He's just that good at being that type of a character. Oh, and I want good. you to vote on a debate in which me and John uh-huh. have been having, okay? okay. And it's Tyler whether or not Logan Paul will ever be WWE undisputed heavyweight champion because I think the answer is yes, at some point he will. John says, heck no, it's never going to happen. I can see title matches and stuff, but I don't think he'll ever get the belt. I think he will. He's had title matches. But, of course, that's during the Roman Reigns Empire of Doom which and Destruction he's never gonna or whatever win that. he's going to call. Uh, I, sorry, John. I think Yes. Because I think now that they come into this Netflix agreement and this entertainment more than sports, he's big they're business. They're going to need those types oh, of he characters. Is. He's definitely big business. Yeah, I, I, I could see a run at, at some point for I, sure. I'm thinking we we bet a poker entry on this at some point. Let's see how WrestleMania goes as well. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh my gosh, he was so confident Check before. Back next week. <laughs> now Brian is weighed in. It's like, well, now yeah. I've asked the expert. Yeah. All right, I got you. Let's go with our second drink, Tyler. I'm going to let you take a choice what here, you got, Tyler. Which drink are you choosing? Uh, I'm going to go with the Dasani water. Ah, the Dasani water. It's cool. It's refreshing. It's something we always need. And something that I always, and of course, classic here, Dasani. Um, One of the things that always intrigues me about 
WrestleMania weekend is the Hall of Fame. Yes. Love the Hall of Fame. In fact, some of the greatest just sports speeches of all time come from these Hall of Fame stories. And I, I would argue that the greatest Hall of Fame speech was Bobby the Brain Heenan. This was shortly after he had throat cancer and was kind of a big coming out party and who better than that voice of my generation, Bobby the Brain. And I think managers have the greatest Hall of Fame speeches because there's the inevitable rundown of who I've managed Mm -hmm. and they say the names and they get crazy, the crowd does, and you go from there. So when Paul Heyman is your headliner for the Hall of Fame in a sadly weak class of Hall of Famers. That's fair. His stories, his passion, it's in Philadelphia, and he can name drop WCW from the Dangerous Alliance. He can name drop everybody from ECW that he worked with, his time in WWE, and of course these stories with Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. His speech is going to be one of the best just for a wrestling fan, sure, but if you just want to see somebody in the art of oration... Paul Heyman. Very refreshing, just like water. Does Paul Heyman shed tears during his speech? Of course. And I think being in Philadelphia, I hope, you know, wrestling has a lot of politics and you work for this company, you work for this company. I hope we get the visual of the ECW contingency of whoever can still participate, standing with him, lining the aisle, or just that backdrop final scene of Paul Heyman and ECW, especially there in Philadelphia. Shouldn't somebody from that time be the one to, because then Roman Reigns, like, he's been officially announced as the inductor. Shouldn't somebody, I feel like, from ECW back in the day, I know right now he is right. Reigns' let, person. Let me make the argument real quick that the answer to that should be no, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I think I'm going with you on because this, Because Roman Reigns is main eventing WrestleMania two straight nights, yeah. and you need to continue that momentum going into the main I, show. Like, one thing, one thing. I a very casual fan, obviously. So obviously, I'm coming at this one v two in a lot, a lot of regards. <laughs> but like, this one, is why I backed off the Logan Paul bet. But and one now thing I'm going to refresh myself. I did not like last year was, and I'm, we may get into this in a second, but I did not like the Rey Mysterio induction. And his son getting up and walking Story out, all that kind of stuff. I feel like kayfabe during yeah. Hall of Fame. I love it. Yeah, should kind of at least for me. I feel like Hall of Fame kayfabe should go away for a little bit and just respect the full body of work and stuff like that. That I would say the same thing for Paul Heyman as well. That yes, that is what he's doing now, and it's been a very successful bit now. Well, but to that, John's to John's argument here. Which one's more valuable? The short term bump you get from having those WrestleMania moments within the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Or the long term stain that it provides. Because twenty years from now, what do you think? Twenty years from now, when you rewatch it, it's like, oh, what was going on here in this situation? And what gruff ECW individual from nineteen ninety whatever is going to be coherent enough to? I don't want Sandman. That's that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Yeah, (laughs) pick one. Okay. So, but yeah, Paul Heyman. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a weak class, sadly, but uh, Paul Heyman's going to make up for it. Who is someone that you want to see inducted that has not been inducted? Because there's been a push for Lex Luger, and that just seems like every year Lex Luger fans are disappointed that he has once again left off the ballot. What is there a name that comes to mind for you first and foremost? Luger actually was the first one, and this is going back, John. You talked about your love for WCW, and it must be because of a Southern thing, just you know the territorial stuff. Uh, Luger was always a good one. He crossed the different promotions and such. Um, I think the one that current fans are going to be clamoring for until it happens, maybe next year, Bray Wyatt, just because of the creativity of it and just the character that he played and really resonated with people. Uh, so that would be one A and one B. And I think it keeps his legacy going even further to to let a year pass, let, let more time go, and let Paul Heyman have his moment this time around. I I, I don't think that's a bad move at all. Yep. All right. That's one thing WWE's been doing really well lately, really well lately, and I give Hunter a lot of credit for this, is he's thinking about the long-term success of storylines, moments, down the line, what are we going to do, how do we pay things off, that may frustrate in the short term, but will the story be finished? We'll see if we land on that one here. I'm going to take a wild guess and go with Sprite. I'm going to take the Sprite next. Sprite. So, you know, when I think about Sprite, this is what I would have when I wasn't feeling well. Uh Uh, or, you know, I needed to get back to normal and we've got a few women's matches. We do. And some of them 
have been built up better than others. And some of them, I think, are second place or plan B for when Sasha Banks, a.k.a. Mercedes Monet, did not sign with WWE. Yeah. Because I've been told through, you know, the research on the internet, she was promised WrestleMania matches in her return. And she said, well, that doesn't hold as much weight as you think anymore outside of money. So she's no longer in the picture. What is kind of the plan B? And I think plan B stands for Bailey. And I think what you're going to have with Bailey, even though it's probably the least talked about women's story, and it's a championship match, Bailey tried a different character. She tried this bad girl. I'm going to run this basically gang of mean girls, and mm-hmm. I'm going to be in charge. And it just never clicked. It's just it's a real bad character. So when you're feeling off and you need that sprite, you got to go back to the basics. And that's why I think she will return to the hugger Bailey gimmick, complete with wacky waving inflatable tube men. <laughs> love that as a part of the, the original theme. Yeah. I think we're getting Bailey as we loved her and thought she would be the female John Cena, as she was called back in the day. I think we're getting a fun character back at a much needed time for both her and for young ladies who are interested in wrestling. I they have their superhero back. There are a lot of Bailey fans out there that have been waiting for this sort of renaissance to take place. I think it's happening. And you heard it right here on the Pavlik Six Pack first that it's definitely <laughs> happening, 100%. <laughs> yeah. And if you have any complaints, you go after yeah. Brian specifically. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but, you know, and again, and it, it's a shame because, I say it's a shame, she's still on a main WrestleMania card. That's what she, as a true fan growing up, has always wanted. But you've got these new... You know, Jade Cargill is now here, and she's just as impressive as can be in this whole incredible growth of Rhea Ripley. And and Bailey is the third kind of act in this whole WrestleMania theme women setting. I just think we're going to get a fun moment. How can she kind of stand out from that instead of just being a, well, we'll just take a break match? I think you get the hugger back, and it's going to be great. She will be fighting on night two yes. of WrestleMania. In all, seven championships will be defended Woo. over the two nights of WrestleMania 40. And this is the fifth time a WrestleMania has been held over the course of two nights. John, do you like the two-night event? Or is it something where you wish it would just go back to one night because you can't possibly make time for both nights? I don't like the two-night event. I would rather watch a seven-hour-long one Sunday start at five and go until question mark. But I understand why they do it. I understand why they made the change to begin with. I guess COVID is kind of what started that. Mm -hmm. And then I understand why, hey, why not get – Two, two for the price of one, or, you know, maybe people pay twice, I guess, to come see it. Right. So I totally get it. But overall, I want to, because I feel like it's always best when it overruns the time of what you typically expect. So if it gets to be 11 o'clock on Sunday and they still haven't gotten to the title That's match right. yet, oh, man, what else is going to happen? It's like, well, let's split it up two days so we can keep it more on time. No, I don't want that. I want you to keep going as long yeah. as possible and just make it this crazy, long, day-long event that we all, whether you're in person or on TV, absolutely. it really is just a full-day to celebration. Me, it feels like a whole weekend celebration, which we just continue to differ on a lot of things here. I love the two nights. Also, the Final Four is the me, same night, so that, yeah, I don't yeah, like that well, either. There you okay. go, that Saturday That's, night. They need some audience. That's the real grievance yeah. there, let's be yeah. honest. But I, it really feels like a three-night event event to me because you've got the hall of fame you've got all of these other events happening around wrestlemania weekend and brian have you ever attended a wrestlemania in person never Is it a bucket and the list one year the you? one year that i was going to go to the one in atlanta i had moved away out of state for 20 oh. months and you know come back to atlanta or new orleans maybe another time one day you will finish your story I I, my story will be finished uh, <laughs> tyler <laughs> i'm gonna let you go back to the well here and pick another drink Let's go with the Coca-Cola Spice. Ooh. Oh, something new, right, Tyler? A little something new. Yeah. Okay. I, and actually, because of sister company here, I, uh, I've i gotten into the spice. I've really enjoyed it. We got our first one. Now, once pack. you get hooked on the spice, your eyes turn blue. It's, it's really it's a rough light. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I finished my first one, and then we got to get a new one in the refrigerator here. But something new. And that's where I'm going with this particular one I'm looking forward to with WrestleMania. For all these years with Vince McMahon being in charge, there was one man behind the camera that sent out all the images to us for all these years, and his name, Kevin Dunn. And that is a love-hate relationship with the pro wrestling community. He's great at some shots, those roadie runs up the aisle and peering back and all that, but then he's also got these jump cuts and sometimes takes away from the action so you could get the social media reaction from a crowd. So there was this love-hate relationship with Kevin Dunn and now he's out. 
So in comes a familiar name, and I'll see if you guys know this name, but the name is Lee Fitting. Have you heard that name before in the producer world? You're going to have to educate us. Yeah, I have not. This is the guy who did College Game Day for years. And he's already tinkering with some different camera angles and some different almost like behind-the-scenes sports coach interview type things. So I think what we're going to get at WrestleMania 40, we're going to call it Drone-a-mania. I think we're getting some unique camera angles, video game-like quality. And yes, they have the crane shots and the traditional cameramen around. I think we're getting a full-on drone hovering above the action as the match goes on, peering out to see this stadium. I just think we're getting some incredible production the way we've never seen it before I was this year. at the Royal Rumble, St. Petersburg, Florida, and I saw drones flying around Tropicana Field while the production is going on. Yeah. And that's just not something you're used to seeing when you attend a live wrestling event. Right. And so you, I think you're, you're on the money here. The cinematography of WrestleMania Ooh. is something that's iconic. Well, and did you notice for, I think it was Elimination Chamber, they actually had the ratings from the 2K24 game. Oh, yeah. I know, I know <laughs> like, that on Raw, You know, too, Lunsford's that, at 87 yeah. and yeah. Havlick's at 81. And, oh, wow. Why? The yeah, best thing is, la- actually watching Raw uh, this week, it was the Raw going into WrestleMania, so yeah. you think, hey, they're going to build this up. They had some match in the middle. As you can tell it's almost like a filler match. Right. And they put the ratings up, and they're both, like, in the 70s. And I'm sure, all I'm thinking is, like, you know, hey, you put Cody and Roman up. They're, <laughs> like, you know, it, it, high 90s probably. And then these mm-hmm. two, it's like, don't think I'm going to play with these two on 2K. Maybe that doesn't always quite work out when you put those ratings Not the first choice for career mode, yeah. So I'm getting a little nervous here on the Pavlik six-pack, and I'll tell you why. There's only two drinks left. Which means we've done four. Which means I don't know how – well, I don't know what you're going to go with because I think I know one thing. So what will be the other? I don't know. John, I'm going to let you pick between the traditional Coca-Cola or the Diet Coke. I think I know the one for the traditional Coca-Cola, so I'm going to go with the Diet Coke. Oh, Coke. he thinks Instead he's got it figured the out. Diet Coke. Well, the Diet Coke is, I don't know. For me, diet, I mean, I'm not slamming Diet Coke. I'm actually a Coke Zero guy more than Diet Coke. It's just, I, I guess, markets a little bit better to me. Um, so Diet Coke is something, yeah, it, it's okay, but I've had it before. And I think we're going to get a repeat of an infamous WrestleMania moment happening on Saturday night. And this comes in the form of Senior Money in the Bank. Oh, Damian Priest. And it's not the route that you think it's going to go. Okay. Because everybody says, oh, would he cash in on Cody? And I think that was one of the plans prior to December. Now, what happened in December? So, AEW has their World's End, or, yeah, World's End event. And they do a finish where Edge beats Christian for the championship, Edge steals a contract, cashes in, and Edge only has the title for two minutes. I think there was some type of plan for Cody to win on Sunday night, hold the belt for three minutes, let the pyro go, and Priest cash in, and it's a new story, basically closing a chapter. And then The Rock got involved, and all plans for Cody were now, let's go with The Rock. So this goes now to Seth Rollins, who has his own issue going on. I think Seth and Drew who McIntyre, who's mm-hmm. also been shoehorned in this because CM Punk's now out. It's a mess, folks. It is but a here's mess. here's how I think they make you-know-what out of you-know-what. They've now said CM Punk is on commentary. Don't think he won't get involved, especially with the way it's basically been Seth Rollins as kind of the side chick of this whole thing. For both matches, by the way, which is weird. Drew McIntyre, CM Punk. I envision Drew McIntyre, Claymore, or something. Puts down Seth. Turns his attention to the table. We get a little skirmish. As Seth is lying in the ring, the money in the bank is cashed in by Damian Priest. And all of a sudden now, we've got four angry individuals with four different dynamics this could go at. That goes through the whole summer. We get CM Punk's return match at SummerSlam in Cleveland, and it's a fatal four-way for Damian Priest and his championship. Do we think it's going to be a good weekend overall for the Judgment Day? For one of them. And then, or maybe two of them. Maybe Rhea Ripley can, uh, holds on. But I think they split. I think this is the thing that finally does it. Priest says, I'm good. 
Monday after Raw, or the, yeah, the Monday Raw, that's when usually the storylines for the summer take off. I could see right there, he say, I'm too good for you guys. I've got the championship. Rhea Ripley say, you know what? I'm good too. And we just have this complete implosion of Judgment Day. That means Priest and Balor lose the title. We go all over the place. But I think a bunch of, oh, this happened, this wasn't expected. I think they can actually tie it together into one great storyline going in for the summer. There are a couple of rematches from last year's WrestleMania happening at this year's WrestleMania. I have a feeling we're going to get into one of them, maybe primarily with the next option here on the Pavlik Six Pack. However, Dominic Mysterio, Rey Mysterio, that's one of them. John, are you over the storyline or are you still into it? I have never bought into that faction at all. I, Ray Ripley, I think is talented, but doesn't necessarily do it for me. I don't care about baby Dominic at all. Um, you didn't like now, the custody of Dominic match? <laughs> <laughs> no. reference to, hey, reference to Lot in yeah. the Lonsford household. Now, I say it's a rematch. It is a tag match, but yeah. you're basically, that's the selling that's the point. point of it. Yeah. The whole point is to get those two guys against each other again. Um, I don't care about Damian Priest. Honestly, I didn't realize it was money in the bank until maybe the Rumble. Some, some thing right. of like, you know, they always tease everything and then never actually do it. You're saving it for a big event like WrestleMania or something. A, a cash in for him does literally nothing for me versus like, I think back to the Seth Rollins cash in with Brock and rain, something like that. Like you just can't, what will be the that. crowd reaction to a Damien priest cash? That's in? what I'm saying. Like you just can't, it, there's just nothing like, I, I, I don't think it's any, I, I think it's just because it's that sneaky, yeah. you know, curse you for doing this and ruining who we really want moment that they need because the other things that happen after WrestleMania is you get these new top heels going into the SummerSlam kind of build up and and this is just a perfect example of that really high upper mid car level guy that once the rock stuff all goes away has to rise we have to have a new bad guy or something and i just find him in that place and obviously wwe thinks highly of him because this time last year he's main eventing in puerto rico against bad bunny mm. so they they have faith in this guy I, I, i'm with you john uh, great but they trust him so they Wait. may trust him for a summer hey they bad trust bunny, Roman Reigns the, too, uh, and i'm not the artist that. yes yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> he's uh, he's good too, Tyler. He is. I didn't know he was in the WWE it's, now. Uh, he's, yeah. Tyler, you he's have actually s- really good. You have so much to catch up on. <laughs> All right, young one. We are down to our last choice here in the Pavlik Six Pack uh, of those intriguing storylines going into WrestleMania 40. There's only one choice left. I will make it. Let's go with the original, Coca-Cola. Made a wise choice, my friend. So, you know, Coca-Cola. It's it's just, it's like WrestleMania stands the test of time, right? And this is the original, and this is the one. And even though we've had some other great products leading up, we've had some other, we've had 39 other WrestleManias leading up to the biggest. And I, I will say this will be the biggest, probably not the greatest, but don't confuse that with the media, the social media, the impressions, and all these things, simply because The Rock has inserted himself back where he grew up in front of our eyes. And because of that, he needs this to be huge. And I think he needs to do it for his own ego. Hence him trying to shoehorn himself into a championship match to steal the glory for him, and I will say that. But... He flopped pretty hard as Black Adam, if I'm not yes. mistaken. No, right. I know that, you know, you know, the meltdown we'll talk more about <laughs> you and, know, and it wasn't, superhero movies. It wasn't just a movie, it was a franchise. DC takeover is what it felt like he was yeah, trying mm-hmm. to accomplish. And when he failed at that, yep. he's now kind of being accused as a being a WWE takeover sort mm, of guy. And so. trying to seize up as much power as possible. So you're you're right so on he, the right he, track. He somewhat fails as a superhero. Jum, uh, Jumanji and Jungle Cruise didn't necessarily set the world on fire, if I'm not mistaken. Plus, oh, by the way, he's got interest in this whole XFL-USFL merger, which is currently going on. Yep. Oh, by the way, he's on the new board of directors for WWE. He needs a home run. So he's going back to rebuild his image at this event. Now, how does he do that? I don't think it's as simple as, oh, he turns on Roman and, oh, The Rock was the good guy and now go watch his movies and all that. I think he's building up for the most epic of conclusions of a WrestleMania that you can get 
Buckle up because we're going to walk you through it. He gets his superhero moment, basically playing the role of Thanos from Endgame of Avengers. Talk me through this. Stay with me because it's going to get detailed. (laughs) Cody needs backup to beat the bad guy. And this is where Avengers will assemble on Sunday night. Saturday night, you've got the main event stipulation where if the bloodline wins, they get to pick the rules and interfere, basically. Bloodline rules. That happens. That's, oh, that happens. Definitely. 100%. No problem. Because yes. what's right. the other side of like, you know, there's just we no don't want a one-on-one on one match. Yeah. We don't want a one-on-one on one match. All right, so this is going to happen. Here we go. Let's vision this. Lee Fitting, now producing, drone shot. We have a match going on. I'm glad we picked the Coke last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was hoping because I was going to say skip and we'll do this later. Here we go. We're walking down the aisle. Here comes the bloodline. War- Rock, Solo, Jimmy Uso, Paul Heyman. Cody has backup. Now, in Avengers Endgame, who were some of this backup that we had? Well, we had our, I'm not going to say side characters. They were important, but you had the Winter Soldier. And, you know, of course, Black Panther made a dramatic appearance. So I'm thinking this might be guys that Roman has feuded with in the past couple of years. Sami Zayn. Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, you might get that. But I think you're calling the bigger guns in. You've got to call in your Black Widow, flippy, agile friend, which in this case is Jey Uso. I thought you were going to say Lita, but that's fine. Well, you know, know, so Jey takes out Jimmy. I, I think you actually call in the Nick Fury of the gang, the one who kind of leads the the Avengers. And I think you see Triple H, kind of. Maybe be the guy that shoes off Paul Heyman. I know he can't get involved because right. he's got that heart condition thing. But I think he, he makes his presence But he's going to tip the scales. He does. But you need more. You need more. This is the, this is the final boss, as we're calling The Rock. Mm-hmm. You need a Hulk. Or as we call it, a beast. And I think you might get a Lesnar appearance. Wow. You need Captain America himself. I could see John Cena being around in Philadelphia. And then you need your Iron Man, the guy that eventually ended Thanos, the longtime rival, Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I think when you get all these superstars assemble, because they're superstars and not pro wrestlers, you will have the most epic conclusion to a WrestleMania event. And it all (laughs) leads with Cody holding up a belt to say, yay, I'm now the main character in this universe to me this sounds like a much heightened version <laughs> of what we saw with triple h versus sting it really is it's just gonna <laughs> yeah, be and again it's but it, it won't be because we need uh rock and stone cold to be the summer angle or anything it'll just be for the hits the social media impressions the coverage afterwards and then the rock can maybe go into the summer and into next year's wrestlemania as fighting cody fighting roman He'll do this for a business perspective, and I think that's why we're going to get all this. One more name sort of rumored to be lingering around is Undertaker. Do you think we see him in this mashup as well? Not as much. Uh, I know he had that rivalry of the big, who's the big dog in the yard with Roman, but I think that's kind of passed. I think you get, because it's not focused on Roman, it's focused on The Rock. Right. And that's why I think we get these former people. Wow. John, would that deliver in your eyes if it was just a hodgepodge of all-stars from yesteryear? I mean, that would deliver. <laughs> I, I think Cena not being involved in this in some way is a massive missed opportunity for him that Agree. I would think he would want to be involved and make sure that he is involved in some way um, as he is growing his movie career to try to yep. pass the rock. And then I think Stone Cold, of course, you know, they had that trailer and everybody pointed out when yep. Roman was, you know, beating the heck out of Cody. There's a trailer in the background that has Cena and Stone Cold on it to where a little Easter egg. Yeah. Obviously Stone Cold the Rock would be the one thing that would then put it over the yep. top, no matter who else comes out that then if it's Stone Cold and the Rock, even just staring each other down would then get everybody hype enough. So yeah, and, and, if any of that happens, then yes, it would put it and, over the And top. the other reason why you're gonna get something big, this is a WrestleMania that ends in zero you get that mega super happy ending moment in WrestleMania's 10, 20, 30, 40. That was Brett being carried off the shoulders at WrestleMania 10, the Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit celebration in 20, Daniel Bryan and the yes in the New Orleans in 30. So this is that 10 year, let's go all out scenario. You've got me jazzed up for WrestleMania 40. (laughs) I was already jazzed up, but hearing your version of this, uh, 
WWE, just know you cannot hire Brian. He is ours exclusively. You'll have Absolutely. to come through us first. But that sounds like a storyline that I would sign up for. I'm not an expert. I'm just a storyteller. I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, promise me this won't be the last Pavlik six-pack that we love have. to come back. I'll, I'll work on the six-pack a little bit okay. more. You know, sharpen it up and uh, do a little bit more uh, workout for it. But um, Until then, we'll yeah. stick with the uh, Coke products. Oh, great job. Give Coke. you a little bit more time. Yeah, Appreciate you tuning in. Hope you enjoy WrestleMania 40. And, John, there's a lot of enjoyment to be had at our title sponsor. That's MyBookie. Hey, go to MyBookie.ag. Use promo code next round to get that first deposit bonus. If you think bloodline rules don't happen right now, Ooh. Cody and Seth plus 350 on there. Ooh. Massive favorite for the uh, Rock and Roman Reigns to win. Also, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, massive underdogs at MyBookie. So if you think either one of them holds on to it, then also go bet that. Make yourself some money. So if you think any of that kind of stuff happens, go play. MyBookie.ag. Use promo code next round. It is set to be a huge weekend for sure for wrestling fans at a time in which the business seems really, really healthy. We'll continue to cover the biggest wrestling event of the year right here on this channel, a little experiment that we call the Meltdown. Make sure you like this video and subscribe as we'll have more Pavlik Six Packs to provide to you in the future.